Since episode 3 in season 6 of Game of Thrones came out, a large number of people have asked me to talk about how realistic the fight at the Tower of Joy is. At this point it's a little late, but why not? Let's see what observations can be made for the sake of entertainment and information. For those who don't know, my perspective is rooted in historical European martial arts, which is the study and practice of medieval and renaissance sword fighting based on instructional manuscripts from those times. I'm by no means remarkably skilled yet and would still call myself a novice due to recent injury related setbacks, but I have a grasp of the fundamentals of sword fighting, like distance and timing, guards, parries, how to throw a cut, etc. And before I talk about the actual fight scene, a few clarifications. I'm well aware that creating a fight choreography is not easy, and that there is understandably more focus on aesthetics and cinematography than on realism. And even though I'm going to criticize a few things, more than a few actually, this is a pretty decent fight scene by movie standards. It's not excessively over the top and martial ridiculous, unlike certain um, glow stick performances, for instance. Also, even though dual wielding two swords of equal length was historically rare in Europe outside of rapier fencing, it makes sense when trying to show just how skilled and badass a famous swordsman is in the story. The actor makes Sir Arthur Dane look overall pretty skilled, as he wields those swords easily without one blade getting in the way of another. But here is the question, going by real life martial arts. Does he do well because of his competence or because of his opponent's incompetence? I would have liked to use actual clips from the scene, but apparently fair use is not a thing on YouTube. When I used short clips from the Conan movies in a similar video, I got a copyright claim. Okay, so here we have the angriest telegraphed swing. That guy is so much into it, he doesn't care about footwork, strategic advance, or the fact that his line of attack is so obvious that it must be a feint. Except that it isn't. So when Dane parries it, what a surprise, look at what he does with his offhand. He takes full advantage of having an extra blade by cutting at the attacker almost at the same time as parrying with the right sword. Oh wait, he doesn't. He cuts with the right sword instead. What? Why? Meanwhile, Ned, instead of cutting at Arthur's arm during the parry, hoping to stop the attack and save his companion, goes for a low thrust. Who would have thought that the thrust would be deflected by the same swing that Arthur had already started? Miraculous. And then there is Mr. I have a shield, but I hate it. Who needs protection anyway? Let me just rotate my shield away from the enemy and turn my back towards him instead. Considering how close his opponent is and how he can easily execute a thrust at any time, this should have looked more like that. Of course, the number one rule of movie swordsmanship also applies to dual wielding. When you have an opportunity to strike an opponent's opening, aim for the weapon instead. Cut to the leg? Nah, let me just swing at your already raised sword. That'll teach ya. And because that was so effective, let me do it again, this time with both swords. A skilled fighter uses the force of the attacker against him by allowing the strike against his sword to jumpstart his own swing, bring it around and counter. Bashing the sword to the side makes it fairly easy to power a countercut with the energy of the attack. Instead, young Ned lets himself be knocked around and stumbles away. Finally, everyone else has decided to join the action, and even better, they have realized that using their strength of numbers might be helpful. So instead of trying to break out of the circle and maneuver into a less dangerous position, Dane just twirls his swords for a bit, happily remaining surrounded. More twirling, because looking cool is more important than defending yourself. Sarcasm aside, to me it looks like the reason why he gets away with the things he does while surrounded by enemies is that two out of four politely wait to not overwhelm him. Again, a choreography with multiple combatants is difficult to do, especially since you don't want the actors to actually hit and injure each other. But realistically, even a very experienced fighter would have almost no chance against four moderately competent swordsmen who have him surrounded. If he is quick on his feet, he may be able to maneuver in such a way that he only faces one or two at a time. But if they coordinate well as a team, they can stall and catch up to keep threatening his flanks and back. Dane does seem to realize that eventually, and he manages to get in front of them. Conveniently for him, they neatly stay in a line for a while. If only they had spears. Oh, and can somebody explain why this dude suddenly drops his shield? He's not hit or anything, he just... I don't really know what he does. And he doesn't even bother to pick it back up. They really hate shields. 
And then there is the infamous cross block, which is rule number two of movie swordsmanship. If you have two weapons and you could defeat an opponent by parrying with one while simultaneously striking with the other, instead use them as one. Always allow them to bind both of your blades with their single one, otherwise the dual wielding might actually achieve something other than looking cool. We can't have that. Oh, and remember to wait politely in the background while the enemy is occupied with killing your companion. While he has one sword bound on a block and the other stuck firmly in your other companion's body, again, do not advance, do not attack. That would be rude. I didn't know Ned Stark was Canadian. Anyway, so I think you get the point. Sir Arthur Dane may be skilled in the art of twirliness, but the main reason why he defeated so many opponents is, well, they suck. In movie fights you don't need to be extremely competent to win, you just need to be less incompetent than your foes. I hope you got a chuckle out of this. As said, for a movie fight it actually looks pretty decent. From a martial arts perspective though, it's a little funny at times. That's enough nitpicking, so thanks for watching.